into this week's edition of the Recruiting Roundup. We've got Jason Jewell. My name is Jared Cohen. Every week we bring you the latest in Arizona high school football recruiting. We do it year-round, and it's getting to be one of the busiest times of year coming up here soon. It's the spring evaluation period, and we're already starting to see some more offers roll in, Jason, especially some of the best and brightest that Arizona has to offer. We're going to start today with Paul Lucas. He picked up two big offers in the past week. The speedster, who's getting it done in track, has also gained some big attention in football as well. Yeah, he was offered by Notre Dame first and then San Diego State came in and offered him second. I expect more offers to roll in for him. One, because speed kills and he has speed. He just broke the 21 second mark in the 200 meters and is number one in the country in that event. It's unbelievable. World class speed for Paul Lucas. So the two offers you mentioned, Notre Dame, San Diego State. Speaking of San Diego State, they also offered two more players locally. Christian Kirk. Haven't mentioned him in a while. That's very bizarre. But he's back in the recruiting roundup because he got an offer from the Aztecs. Yeah, offer number 35 for Christian Kirk. Not No knock to the Aztecs. If he's really going to go there or not, we'll see. But uh, then the Aztecs also offered Stephen Miller, the big tackle out of Gilbert, who's seen his recruiting rise up. He was offered by Arizona State previously and by BYU. Good prospect, Stephen Miller, who's definitely blown up and getting some great attention since last football season ended. The next player to get to, Hamilton star defensive lineman Caleb Pert. Now, Hamilton's had a long list of D1 guys come out of their school, and he seems to be the next big one coming out. We had Quaylen Cunningham last year. Caleb Pert's the next guy in line, and he picked up two offers in the past week. Yeah, I definitely think he is Hamilton's top prospect and well-deserved. Been on varsity since he was a freshman and just been tearing it up. He was offered by Yale, so obviously a smart guy. And then he took an unofficial visit to Tucson, went to U of A's uh, spring game, and was offered by the Wildcats there. He's just a very, very impressive kid. Excited to see him start to blow up with some new offers. Matt Pistone, one of Jason Jewell's favorites, he found this guy out of nowhere, and people are starting to catch on, Jason. His first Pac-12 offer. Yeah, his first BCS offer was offered by Oregon State who does a great job of finding those sleeper prospects. Oregon State does a very, very good job, very thorough job in recruiting. Going all the way down to Yuma to get pissed, or to offer Pistone 6'5", 240, it's not going to be his first BCS offer. And you know, the thing that I found interesting about the, the Oregon State offer, Jason, the first time we mentioned Pistone as a sleeper guy before he got his first offer is that he's a tight end that could maybe move to the offensive line, and we compared him to Trent Moore at Hamilton. Trent Moore ended up at Oregon State. Here's Matt Pistone being offered by Oregon State, a very similar skill set. Yeah, exactly. Those big kids, we've talked about a lot on the recruiting roundup. Guys that are you know 6'5", tall, long, athletic, those are the players that are coveted and get recruited heavily. And this seems to be a specific makeup, the Pistones of the world, the Trent Moores of the world, that the Beavers sure like they're up on Corvallis. The final player to get to, Ryan Parento. We mentioned him a little bit during the last season because he's a playmaker over at Boulder, uh, Boulder Creek. So here's the first offer for Ryan Parento. Yeah, South Dakota State, first offer. The Jackrabs do a tremendous job recruiting in the state of Arizona. I don't think this will be Parento's first or only offer. He's getting um, some interest from BYU, from Utah, from Colorado, and I did talk to him, but I really like him a lot. He's six foot one, 190 pounds, going to be a three-year varsity starter. Reminds me a lot of Notre Dame Prep's Jordan Schleter, who ended up going to walk on Arizona State, but a, a physical kid, loves to come up and make hits in the run game. You know, I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jason, going to the walk-ons at Arizona State. We've seen quite a few of them here. What have you been hearing about what is making the, the walk-on program at Arizona State so successful? We've seen We've seen uh, uh, Jordan Schleter, Josh Holkstra, and uh, even more guys in the past, Jarek Hilgers out at Desert Vista. They seem to be doing a pretty good job of landing these walk-ons. What makes it such a good situation for the local kids to try this? Right, don't forget Freddie Gamage, too. Yeah, Freddie Gamage. But they've done a great job. One, it's local, it's at home, and these kids, a lot of them are good, good students, so it makes it very affordable that they can come in, maybe get some academic money, and then play for possibly their, their dream school. I imagine a lot of these kids went and they grew up as Arizona State fans, so being able to stay home and be local guys, I think intrigues them. Sorry to get sidetracked there a little bit, All but right. that's, that's it for this week's edition of the Roundup. Thanks for sticking with us. As always, we got more coming up as spring evaluation period approaches very quickly. It'll be a busy time and we'll have you covered. That's Jason Jewell. I'm Jared Cohen. This has been the Recruiting Roundup on Sports360AZ.com.